Hey, everybody. Good morning, good day, good afternoon, and good evening, whomever you are, wherever you are, and whenever you are. <laughs> Welcome back to Birch Bay, episode five now, and I'm your host, City Sculptor. Say, uh, we're looking in on the revamped stadium district. That was the subject of our last episode, and uh, we did quite a transformation in this space. I'm going to zoom in here to our family fan fun zone, and this is the area where you can come to celebrate and get all fired up before the big game and then uh, come and unwind after the big game. That was a lot of fun uh, and I think it's going to be a great space for fans to you know, really appreciate the games we got going on here in, in Birch Bay. We've got our football stadium, we got our basketball arena and everything just looks great now in this space. It was a, it was a much needed improvement. So if you haven't a chance to check out that episode, please do go over there uh, after this one and give it a view. Tell us what you think. Thumbs up if you like it, thumbs down if you didn't like it, and leave us a comment. Okay, so for today's episode, let's turn our attention down south here. We are going to be focusing on this area now that's, uh, you know, I'm going to zoom in just a little bit more, that's on the screen, basically between Chestnut Boulevard and out here in the, uh, out here in the water. And this is going to be our, this is, we've, been, we've talked about it for a couple of episodes now. It's going to be our cargo harbor. It's going to be our port, if you will, of, of Birch Bay, servicing the entire metropolitan area of Birch Bay. We're going to have a, a, a massive car, cargo harbor in here, and it's going to have a real industrial kind of vibe to it, real industrial look and feel. Uh, we're going to be expanding this space out into the water, actually, and that's going to be kind of an interesting build. Um, you can see where this boulder is over here. I'm going to be basically drawing a line out diagonally into the water here and I'm going to be building out a nice big flat surface area here for our our harbors our I guess our cargo harbor and our cargo hub to um, you know to be placed in that space that should give us access to the shipping lanes that are just offshore and we're going to be mixing in a couple of, of different industrial DLC assets in there to kind of you know give it that rugged harbor look and feel. We're gonna we're gonna put in a whole bunch of different um, you know different styles of buildings, but we're gonna focus in this area too on the industrial evolution. Now, unlike Sturgeon Square, where we came through uh, and historicalized a lot of those old brick warehouses and brick factory buildings. We're probably going to let these evolve now into you know more modern structures. So we'll see what we get with that. But um, the idea is we'll we'll jut this out into the ocean a little bit further. We're gonna we'll put all the the noise and the the traffic and hectic nature of a cargo port out here a little bit away from the shore, and uh, <laughs> again create some really unique uh, thoughts and ideas in this space. So with all that as a backdrop. Let's do this. Okay, as I just mentioned, we're gonna build out a pretty massive space here uh, coming out into the water. And so I think what I'm gonna do first thing is I'm gonna pause the game because I'm not sure what kind of mayhem I'm gonna unleash on the poor residents of Birch Bay by doing the kind of uh, terraforming that we're talking about here. So <laughs> we're gonna grab our level terrain tool. And, I, and like I said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna run this diagonally out into the water here. So I'm going to start from this point down here by these boulders and just draw a line out. Oops, let's, let's increase our brush strength. We're going to drag, drag that line out diagonally and start to build the lookings, if you will, of, of our cargo port seawall. And we'll bring that up, you know, kind of to run somewhat parallel to what the existing shoreline and ideally Ideally, what I want to do is build a large platform that rests in here that still has a channel that runs between this platform and the original, you know, original land, land uh, shoreline. 
runs along this channel and and mirrors the shoreline here. So uh, let's uh, let's jump in here and and start building that out a little bit better. everything is I'm sure everything's fine all right wow uh, the uh, the tempest has finally died down there <laughs> we created a lot of havoc by uh, raising this this harbor pier out from the from the bottoms of the ocean and quite a bit of flooding but that's okay we have some great uh, we got some great flood response teams that <laughs> managed to pump out everybody's basements and we're alive again and now that we're back in business, Let's start, uh, let's start framing this all up with a key wall. I think that's going to be the important thing. Let's see if we can um, tie into what's going on over here um, coming off of our old space. I'm going I'm to drop this key wall in just right along the shore here and try and create a nice, neat uh, frame for us to start building off of. We'll come all the way around as much as we can. Come out this way instead. Bring those two in to, together. Yeah, I like the way that's starting to look. And we're going to come out here. And I think what I'd like to do is just going to just tie that right into there. So it creates a nice continuous wall down along the shore there. We'll continue work on our, our key wall down here uh, along the harbor space. Yeah, I think this is going to turn out really nicely. We can just bend this back in. Let's get rid of all these other roads along the side here. And we can dial this in. Uh, there you go. Nice. Nice. We managed to build out our, you know, our long cargo harbor pier if you will and this nice neat little inlet harbor as well uh, came back here after all of the turbulent seas died down and the residents of birch bay were able to pump out their basements so uh, i think we're in good shape now the the seas seem to have calmed down a little bit and we can start the process of building out the port of birch bay now, my first order of business is going to be to bring, you see this couplet, couplet road here that comes up and accesses the freeway. Well, our first major action is we're going to bring that couplet road out and across this inlet and then have it curve down in and then form a, I don't know, I probably will disengage that couplet, but I'll have just a larger... Um, collector road that'll run parallel to the to the shoreline and along with that you know maybe it'll have it on this side here along with that we'll then start dropping in our our cargo harbors so that we can start creating activity so that should create a really beautiful looking um, entrance if you will into our into our inner harbor okay so the first thing we're going to tackle here is we're going to get this um, this couplet road up here and we're going to connect that down into our across our inlet and onto our main kind of pier platform. So we'll do that by um, first drawing out some some basic roads. And I'm going to use the industrial, the indu industry highway, industry highway. Yeah, that's the one we're going to use. We're going to come out here, and what I'll do is I'll come out ten. No, I'll come out twelve, twelve, and then take it up. Let's take it up two. Uh, and we'll do the same thing on this side. And then we're going to run out another 12. Let's take off those road guidelines real quick. Up. Let's do... Let's do three. No, we're going to have to go up four. Because I want to create this... Well, I guess ultimately it's not going to matter too much. One, two, three, let's see, 12. 
four, 12. Okay, and then we're gonna come back and do the same on the other side. Uh, and then we're gonna start to level that off. We'll come out, let's see, 12 spaces. We'll only go up one this time. And then we'll come out here. Yeah. Start getting close to those key walls and your roads start getting really finicky. But the next thing I wanna do is I wanna turn off grid and road length. So the only thing I've got active is angle because we're gonna run out into the water here. And when you're right on top of these key walls, they, uh, the, the tool gets pretty, uh, pretty finicky. And so I'm gonna get up nice and close to that key wall here. We're gonna start that. And then I'll come in and do the same thing on the other side. We're gonna get in close to that key wall there. I don't know, do I have to go down one or two? Let's see, try one more, yep. Get in nice and tight and place that. And then, yeah, that's pretty close, that's pretty close. Then the next part is we're gonna be really cool. So we're gonna drag this across and look at this arch that it creates. It creates a really neat looking arch. And I wanna make sure that as I come across the water, my bridge ends up being pretty level. Eh, you know, it's okay if it dips down slightly on this other side. But as you zoom in here, yeah, you get this really cool effect of having an arch spanning across the uh, the inlet. And we'll come back and we'll do the same thing on the other side. We'll, we'll zip that across so that they're roughly in the same spot. Yeah, all right, I like the look of that. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna tie this in, tie this couplet system into this, into this uh, industrial kind of four lane road here. And so the way we'll do that is we're gonna come back down here and uh, I'm just gonna turn on all these things again. And uh, we're gonna go out 12, elevate by one, it's at th three meters, and then bend that in. We'll do the same thing on the other side. Elevate by one, bend that in, and now that gives us something to uh, something to attach to from our from our bridge segments. And so that being said, I can come out, connect out, hit that that line, and draw that in. Come out here. Uh, no, we'll, we'll use the other way. We'll come out this direction, hit that line. Make sure we're getting the the bridge line. I think that's the one we got. Yep. And then we'll just bend that in. And then we'll make sure everything's going in the right direction. Reverse direction there, there, there. And then reverse direction there, there, there. You get the idea. And now, you know, even with vanilla, you can create these beautiful inclines. You know, gentle slopes going up. There's nothing too... Uh, there's nothing too dramatic. It's just a nice gentle slope that comes up. And then of course, when you get down to the other side, it bends its way back down, merging together into this, uh, this four lane wide industrial road. There we go. So now we've created a nice access point. From here, I'm gonna drop in my cargo hubs and I'm gonna put three of them into this uh, cargo, I uh, see cargo ports, I guess. Uh, but I'm going to do two car of these cargo harbors. And uh, one of the tricks we like to do in vanilla is, is drop down a piece of road segment that you want this thing to attach to. And then just you kind of got to wiggle it around a little bit until it hits green. And then wham, it's in there. And when you do that, it doesn't, uh, it, it doesn't elevate this cargo harbor so that it tears your ground and makes your ground look all funky. So we'll do that there. Uh, I'm going to drop one here, attach it to that one, and then I'm going to come back down over here. Now let's see if we can squeeze. Yep, we can. Just enough room. So we'll squeeze that one in there. And now you've got this cargo hub that's got the rail line, and I'll be able to take that rail line now up around the hill, eventually attach it into this factory hill area. And then I also have the other two cargo uh Ports? What do they call them? Cargo Harbor. Cargo Harbors. Uh, we've got those two as well. So I imagine this is going to have a lot of activity uh, at once we get up and running. And then the next piece I want to do, this will be uh, this will be an interesting, maybe a little bit of a head scratcher. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to delete those roads out. No big deal. Uh, and then I want to come into our fishing industry. And let's see here. Let me just let me just double check here. If I can drop that in there, does it? Yeah, see how it elevated there? And that's the thing that we avoided with the cargo hubs. 
So I'm going to come back in here. I'm going to take that out. And I'll drop a piece of road in there. Just a little piece of road so that we can tie into it. Uh, whoop, let's go. Whoops. We're going to put it down to here. Right, right up. Let's see. Hopefully that's far enough back. And uh, yeah, okay, perfect. Look at that. Snap that right in there. And now, see, it's not elevated. It's just in there nice and smooth like. And we've got a, a fishing. Uh, what is that? That's called the uh, fishing harbor. Fishing harbor. The ultimate goal of that is not to produce fish. I mean, it'll be a nice by byproduct of what we're doing. But one of the things that I wanted to do is I want to drop that in more for decor than anything. Uh, I was recently down in Florida, and I was told, uh, this is something I recently learned, is that when cargo ships come to port, they don't just drive right on in. Uh, they often run a pilot boat out to those cargo ships, and a, a pilot that works in that particular port, he, gets, he or she gets ferried out to the cargo ship, and then they board that ship, and they're the ultimate, I guess, pilot or captain that brings the ship into port. So it got me to thinking, what if I simulated that and I ran a fishing boat out to the point of contact where, let's say out here, let's see, where's the cargo line hit? Yeah, right there. So if I run a fishing route that comes, comes out and intersects in this spot over here, and then another one over here, and okay, maybe another one over here, so that it simulates the look and feel of a pilot boat going out to intersect intercept, I'm sorry, the cargo ship, then maybe it looks like that pilot boat is acting like a tugboat or something along that line. Or maybe it's just, you know, to deliver the, the, the harbor, uh, the harbor master or har I guess harbor pilot. I don't know what they're called, but, uh, anyhow, I thought let's throw it in. Okay. Next up, now that we've dropped in our main assets, the next thing I'm going to do is a little trick, um, to bring in some, of our oil industry, uh, you know, space, if you will, real estate. And the reason I want to do that is because there's a couple of assets that I want to use in the oil, from the oil real, uh, the oil industry uh, business. And I don't want to start a whole new oil industry, especially over here where there's no oil. <laughs> we're going to do that. And then we're going to come back here and we'll uh, erase that and clean that up. And then the other, we're going to do the same thing with our forestry, our forestry industry, which is on the the far north side of town. Uh, let's see here. Well, where is it? It's way, way up here. Okay. Live Oak Lumber. There you are. And make sure I don't cut any, you know, cut any of these things off. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll go all the way around the outside. Look at that. Yeah, it's a little, it's a little cheese in the game, but that's okay. And, uh, and, and the reason I wanted to do that is that there are a few assets that I really want to take advantage of for each of, from each of those uh, industries DLC uh, segments. And um, one of them is, as we get closer down into this area here, uh, let's see here, da -da -da. This, is the, this is the oil industry one. There are those, those oil tanks. And, you know, I, I don't have the, the roads built in just yet, but these are the items I'm looking at, like this guy here. Um, not necessarily want to place it, but what I want to do is I want to drop in a few of those in here. So this has kind of an oil look and feel about it. And then the forestry one, there's this really cool, uh, what I think is really cool. Anyhow, uh, let's see here. Let's, let's paint out a little more space uh, just to, so you can get, get a see for what, it, get a feel for what it looks like is this forestry maintenance building. And I thought that had a cool, I don't know, sort of a dockside look and feel about it with the little with the little winch in there. Yeah, see, like a little little hook crane thing and uh, some barrels and, and whatnot. But I just thought that was a real cool, maybe dockside look uh, industry uh, asset as well. So we'll use those. Uh, you know, ideally, I, I'll probably just keep a lot of the space that's closest to these, uh, to these cargo harbors just concrete. And then I'll drop in some, you know, behind it, I think what we'll do, whoops, was we'll drop in, hmm, let's see here. I'm going to go out 10 and connect in, and 10 and connect back out. Uh, and then I think this will be a, 
this will be a road that runs along here. And on one side of it, we'll put, um, you know, we'll, we'll just dot in some industrial uh, some industrial buildings and hope that we get some assets that spawn that have uh, cargo containers and so forth. And I'll you know, work my way down around the pier and, and make that happen, then kind of down along the shore. And then I'll also drop in, there's a ton of really great things that we can use, like, um, let's see here. I like these, yeah, see, like uh, cargo yards, and you'll see like the boxes and containers pile up there. And then we'll drop in a number of warehouses and so forth. Um, I don't know, a large warehouse, that might be kind of interesting. I don't know that I use that very often. But, uh, you know, we'll, we'll take a look at that. You obviously have some mediums and, and uh, some smaller ones and so forth. So we can kind of mix and match in this space and combine industrial with warehouses uh, and, you know, some of these tanks and just kind of create this really rugged look and feel for this space. All right, let's start building out our road network. Okay, now that we've got uh, the bulk of the frame of our road network in place, we can start dropping in some assets. And you know what I'm going to do here is, uh, I think what I want to do is, is is grab some of these industrial buildings and just start dropping in these um, kind of these four square buildings here, and just get them going. Uh, we'll we'll start building those out. And uh, you know, other thing I want to do here is I, I want to make use of some warehouse assets and uh and you know kind of container yard or cargo yard assets let's see if we can get close here let me see it does this does this guy fit in here he does not nope but his his called bigger brother bigger sister i don't know this one fits here <laughs> and uh so so we'll do that but before i do that maybe what i'll do is i'll come in here and i'll drop down a gravel road and have that gravel road feed the one that looks like a warehouse, right? So we've got that, uh, and then we can drop in this one here. And so we can kind of, I don't know, alternate, if you will, between, um, you know, open cargo yards, and uh, I can extend this road down along here. Uh, you know, maybe it doesn't have to go all the way to the end. Maybe it only comes down to, let's call it here. And, uh, you know, we'll drop in a couple more warehouses and then we'll, we'll throw down this, we'll throw down that cargo yard right here. Yeah, see, then we, we're starting to get this look, does that, nah, it's way too big. We're starting to get this look of, there's a few warehouses in here. Let's try and get it equidistant, there you go. And then what we can do is go into our airports DLC and grab that small airport apron. And, uh, you know, come through and, and drop in concrete all the way along here. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll save all of that for the detailing time lapse. But, you know, then these warehouses would, can come to life with a variety of goods that we're going to be importing and exporting uh, through, our, through our cargo harbors. Uh, but I'll, I'll decorate it up. I'll try and draft it all up with a, a bunch of that concord, con concrete apron uh, <laughs> that is our... You know, our vanilla version of a surface painter, right? Uh, just to kind of give it that rough industrial look and feel. And we, we'll mix in some gravel and, and some, you know, some you know, shrubs, like little, you know, overgrowth kind of, you know, stuff as well in this space. 
Uh, yeah, and then I think didn't we had we had said that we've got we had already worked in our little uh, industrial space here, and so I'm going to paint this is this is the forestry industry, and uh, let's see here if I go to forestry and then we go to the forestry maintenance building, where will that fit nicely? It fits really nicely in that space right there. And I think that's kind of cool. That's a really cool looking feel. We talked about it a little earlier. Ooh, it would be even better if I could orient it the other way and get those garage doors and that hook facing uh, facing the harbor itself. So I'm gonna, uh, let's see, let's, let's, let's see if we can get him out of here. I mean, it's not in the industry area. You know what, we'll delete it. We got the money, we can afford it, we got it. And we'll run this line out here. We'll just slide out a couple more, and that should do the trick. If we can get that in there, we'll bring this in. Oh, yeah. Let's see, that's going to be perfect. Now you're going to see those garage doors and that hook, and it just kind of has a... Anytime you got a hook in a in a sea area, doesn't that just, just kind of scream to you? A vast... It's like a pirate, you know, sort of. A, well, maybe not. <laughs> but I like that asset going in there. And now... Uh, the other thing that we did was we drew out some of the oil industry DLC space here. And let's just see if we can get a couple of those oil industry tanks to drop in there. Those big tank farms. Oh, yeah, we've got plenty of space. Plenty of space. In fact, I don't want to put them right, right next to the, uh, to the port itself. But, ah, you know what? I'll bring it out here so it, eh, maybe leave a little... Does this fit in? No. So if I slide that guy up against there, will will the smaller one fit in? Let's take a look. Oh, it does. Look at that. Just perfect. Just perfect. So I can, you know, I can come in here and maybe put a few of those in there. Boy, ideally, wouldn't it be nice to get them in there? I think what I'll do is I'm gonna, uh, I'll come in here off camera and I'll move that road. I'll back it up so that we can squeeze some more of these small tank farms right in there. Yeah, there we go. We bumped that road in just a little bit, and now we can squeeze in a few more of these smaller tanks. Um, might be cool to have, you know, uh, you know, we'll drop in those right here, and then we can put some concrete in there as well. And uh, all right, let's move this guy back over here, though. I think he looks better on this side. And then you've got all the tanks kind of clustered together. We can drop in some more assets in here as well. Okay, let's see. Um, you know, one of the things we need to have down in this area, and I think it's going to be important to have, is a postal sorting facility. Because this is typically a pretty high traffic. You know, there's a lot of, a lot of trucks that get generated by these guys. And, um, you know, I think it, it should come down in here somewhere. Uh, I'm not sure exactly where. I think probably on this side of the, uh, on this side of the bay. So let's put a uh, let's put a road in specifically for that purpose. I'm going to turn on all this stuff again, and that way we can uh, we can get this one in here. Maybe it's not right on one of our main streets, but it gives us the option of of getting all that mail in and out, all the postal, all the parcels in and out of the city with your choice of three different, uh, three different shipping ports. And of course you can get access to the, uh, to the highway coming back out and down and around and across our bridge. We're actually going to bend this guy up to intersect with Chestnut as well. Uh, and then there's a train station coming off of that shipping port. There'll be some trains up here in Factory Hill as well. So the postal sorting station should have ample opportunity to connect to uh, the outside world. And then I think one of the things I'm going to do here too, uh, there was an asset in the parks area. Is it called Marina? Yeah, let's see what that looks like. Can I drop any of these guys? Oh, yeah, sure. Just for giggles, I want to see what that looks like. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a good look. That's going to be a good look. So I think I'll dot some of those guys in uh, into this little inlet, the inner inner harbor, if you will, um, and uh, I'll add for some nice decor.
So again, we're going to get we're going to get a little rough and tumble, some old rugged industry in here, and uh, we've got some industrial evolution stuff that's going to go on up here. Probably let it evolve into some newer buildings as opposed to the old brick buildings. And uh, we're also going to you know make sure that we set up our fish our fishing boat line to mirror the paths in and out for our cargo harbors. We'll get that set up. You know, those are kind of the Kind of the cool things. Oh, I know what is one of the things I wanted to do too, because we want to have some old, kind of filthy, dirty trucks running around in here. I was thinking about putting in some recycling stations, just as a, uh, you know, they kind of have a, they kind of have that that look and feel. Uh, you know, I'll drop it in here just so we can see what it looks like. But you know, it's got, it's got a bunch of bins and and so forth receptacles. You're going to have a lot of truck traffic running in and out. So I think that'll be. You know, those those will fit in nicely with the theme of what we've got going on down here. So this seems like a really good time for a, a place for a detailing time lapse because we got a lot of work to do. We've got a lot of work to do, a lot of buildings to place in, you know, a lot of growable buildings to place in. Um, and so those obviously take some time. And we're going to want to come in here and and tidy up all the, the details with a lot of concrete and a lot of eh, just kind of scrubby looking stuff. So sit back, relax, enjoy, and we'll catch you after the time lapse.
Okay, welcome back from the time lapse. Look at this, the port of Birch Bay. <laughs> we got it done. And it was uh, quite the build. Uh, I think it turned out really cool, really cool. And uh, I'm really excited to walk you through it. Let's take a look here, let's take a deeper dive. I'm gonna zoom right in quick for our first one. It's our cargo hub. And you can see that that cargo hub, it connects to the outside world now. And so we've got a lot of uh, a lot of train traffic running up and down that line, which takes us out to our oil industry and our ore industry a little further outside of town. But I, you know, I framed it up nicely with some of the airport fencing. I dropped in some of that that concrete, and then just tidied things up with a little bit of uh, gravel pathing on either side of the main track coming in, just to gri give the appearance of a little bit more weight, if you will, just a, a bigger. Uh, facility here. And we've got a little key wall starting here, which I'm sure will extend in our next episode or two down the line. Uh, transitioning over to our oil tanks. This turned out great. I'm glad we extended the oil, the oil industry zoning down into here so we could drop in these oil tanks. And then we've got a wastewater treatment plant and some water tanks as well. It kind of really gives you a Port of Long Beach sort of a vibe going on uh, with all the tanks out here. And then we have some marinas down along the shore. We can see a lot of little pleasure craft in there. And we replicated that also in our inner harbor, which we'll get to shortly. We also, another trick we used is we extended our lumber industry uh, zoning down into here and put in this really cool lumber maintenance building. And it's got a, it's got a hook there and some garage doors. It really feels like a, uh, a cargo port kind of an asset and then we dropped in some of those oil barracks behind it so maybe the dock workers have a little place to stay if they have an extended uh, shift uh, also with some a maintenance building behind it we've got a little got some you know containers back here again really i thought blended in well with that that whole vibe of a, of a cargo port and you can see this cargo harbor sitting right along the shore we dropped in some stadium lights here, 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 and here. And you'll see that for each of the cargo harbors that I put into place so that at night it really pops. You can see that area just great. Now, next to our harbor, we've got a variety of different small warehouses and yards for storage of goods and some vanilla industry sitting in behind it, which was nice because we ended up getting some containers, some you know, some silos or I guess maybe liquid storage tanks of some sort, uh, more containers and so forth. And then we got to the end of our kind of the peninsula, our pier, if you will, and I dropped in some rock formations, just kind of tied it all off with some, you know, some overgrowth, some plantings and so forth, just to, just to kind of give it that, that ruddy, rustic kind of look and feel. Uh, you can see our, our cargo ships coming and going. One of the things that we did uh, that was a unique build, and I think we mentioned that earlier, is I dropped in here. This is our pilot house. And our pilot house has our pilot boats that run out to intercept our, our cargo ships and actually guide them into, into port. And eh, we don't see any out there right now that are, that are being worked. But you can see our pilot ships, our pilot boats that are out there shuttling, uh, shuttling our harbor pilots out to drive the big cargo ships into shore. And so you know, like, you'll come up here and you'll see, they, they come out and they interact, or intersect I should say, with that path. You can see this, this one coming into shore and maybe our little pilot gets, com comes out here and runs around the buoy, gets dropped off, and, uh, and helps to bring the ship into shore. Okay, going back to our inner harbor, I really like the way that turned out too with our, with our We've got a fishing, uh, uh, fishing harbor here. Of course, the fishing harbor here that's doubling as our pilot harbor. We've got some marinas, and I grabbed some extra dock works from the parks um, parks tab, and I think those are uh, I think the Rhine and the Seine docks that we use just to give it a little bit more, um, you know, a more a more ruddy kind of harbor look and feel. Now zooming in, I love that span. That is so cool with the with the boats coming in and out of the uh, of the inner harbor. I think that turned out just really cool. And of course, you've got that high capacity freeway, uh, highway or freeway running over at the industry freeway, which ties in nicely to our main freeway as we come out uh, into this area. 
see a lot of congestion in this area, a lot of congestion. And so we'll have to work on figuring that out as well. Probably bring in some bus routes um, and other ways to, you know, maybe some other connecting roads to, to alleviate some of that pressure. But for now, um, you know, things seem to be functioning pretty well. I want to call your attention to this rise back here. I don't want to call it a hill, but it is a rise. And you can see as you make your way up this little rise, you've got all these little machine shops, maybe printing presses, uh, stamping houses and so forth that are up there. And then I tied it all in with concrete in between, in between all of these. And the reason I did that is because I, I, well, first of all, I wanted to have improved walkability. But second of all, when you zoom out, it gives you this impression that it's one big slab of concrete with all of these buildings that are that are built on it. Yeah, you've got some plantings here and there, some trees just to soften a little bit, but really wanted it to give have that that rugged industrial vibe. Oh, and then down here along the waterfront, we have some recycling centers in here because again, I thought that those buildings looked really nice and gave us a gave us a harbor vibe and then we got even got a little seedy motel tucked in down here. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, you, you, all the sailors are at sea for so long. Maybe they just need a place to relax and unwind. We'll just we'll just leave it at that. So we, we've got our seedy little motel. Uh, we got a fire station. We got a police station that we decorated up nice, and of course the big postal sorting facility. So now we can service all of the the post offices that are scattered all throughout uh, Birch Bay. So you know, I really like the way this turned out. So why don't you give me your thoughts on this? It's, uh, again, it's, it's, a, it's a nice, good size harbor that should service a, a mid-sized city like Birch Bay uh, with our population now over 80,000. Uh, I think this should be more than adequate to get all of our goods and services in and out of the city. So really, uh, really excited about that. Okay, so that wraps up this episode for today. I hope you guys enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed making it. And, uh, you know, I'm going to bid you farewell for now. And I hope to see you guys again real soon. We've got some really cool episodes coming up. So until then, good morning, good day, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. We'll catch you soon.